Hey, Doug. Hello, Sean. All right. So today, uh, I wanted you to share what happened. Uh, we thought I thought maybe it'd be a good learning point of what happened today at your closing. Was it today? Sure. Mm -hmm. One of your closings today in re in regards to um, seller paid closing costs. Right. You want to sure kind of tell us what was important <clears throat> about that. Yeah. And well, what happened? Uh, just uh, a little bit of background. Oftentimes, a buyer will ask a seller to help offset some of their costs for their financing. Okay. And those costs usually run around 3% of the buyer's mortgage amount. So oftentimes the buyers are using all their cash for down payment, so they're asking the seller, can you help pay some of these costs if I pay you a good enough price in your house? Okay. And most sellers will do that because they get a good enough price on their house that they're willing to contribute and help the buyer get their financing and that way they can sell the house. So then what happens is that there's an addendum that is added to the purchase agreement that states that, that the seller is willing to pay X amount of dollars towards the buyer's closing costs at closing. Okay. All right. So um, there's two ways to write, the, write up those addendums. Mm -hmm. If you're representing a seller, you want to write up the addendum that um, I'm contributing X amount of money, but if for some reason the buyer's mortgage company mm -hmm. um, doesn't allow that amount to be used or that mm -hmm. or that the uh, buyer's mortgage company isn't um, charging that amount then the ec the extra amount that isn't being used mm -hmm. goes back to the seller at closing as okay. extra proceeds to the sale okay if you're a buyer though um, what you might want to think about is having a different phrase that says that the closing costs are going to be used no matter what and so, for example, if my closing costs, if we've agreed upon $5,000 and my closing costs come in at $4,500, mm -hmm. instead of the money going back to the seller, the money would be used to reduce the purchase price right. of or the property. Something right. else. And so it kind of depends on, you know, what side of the fence you're sitting on. Of course, any purchase agreement is a meeting of the mind, so everybody has to agree to it. So um, just to let you know and be aware that there are two different clauses, uh, two different types of um, wording of this right. clause that sellers pay for closing costs. Which you as an agent, you kind of foresaw this and wrote that into the advantage of your seller so right. that it was like, for example, it was like 6500 in seller paid closing costs, but it ended up that the mortgage company only had closing costs of 5500 for them. 5100 5100 so your sellers got that fourteen hundred dollars yeah. back. Yeah. So and so that that was nice for my sellers. The buyers were a little surprised um, about that. It was in the wording, and that's how it was done. Right. And so um, it's just something you have to be aware of, and just make sure that you know that that's okay. If you don't use up all the closing costs as a buyer, that the seller will get the remaining amount. Okay. So, well, thanks, Doug. Yeah, Appreciate good. it. Good luck. Okay. Thanks. All right.